Hello and welcome. In today's practice, we're going to work in a very gentle and receptive way. So we'll be using a lot of props in today's practice. We'll start by coming down onto a soft surface. So it's helpful to place a folded blanket right out over your sticky mat, or you could go to a carpeted floor or a wood floor if you're wearing soft clothing and socks. We'll start by doing some sliding yin somatic work on the floor. And then we'll do a little bit of movement to really open up some more flow and fluidity into the hips and legs. And we'll conclude with a restorative pose. And so especially for the restorative posture, you will need a lot of props. So in addition to the blanket out over your sticky mat, it will be helpful to have some cushions and some extra blankets. So I have some yoga bolsters, but if you don't have bolsters at home, that's fine. You could use other cushions and we'll just make do as we set the pose up. Finally, it's helpful to have a strap. So if you have a yoga strap, that's great. Um, or you could use a tie or a belt or something like that from around the house as well. Let's begin here by coming down onto our back. So extend your legs and release your arms, coming down onto that folded blanket on your sticky mat. So extending your legs, releasing your arms. Do make sure that you have your strap nearby as we begin. So take a moment here now as we settle to simply enjoy this place of rest. Perhaps it's been a really busy day. Without the need to adjust the body in any way, simply observe how you've landed today. You could notice any levels of busyness, levels of restlessness in the mind. Maybe that sense of anxiety is trapped somehow in the physical tissues. Just notice if there are areas of tension or stress held in the body that you can sense and feel right now. And allow your body to really drop. So feel the bony layer of the body settling and sinking. Feel the bones of the legs, the heels, the pelvis, shoulder blades and skull, all dropping and settling. Notice the support of the earth. Notice the places where your body contacts the mat. Good, and then from here, we'll just slide one foot up towards the inner groin. So bending the leg, knee goes off to the side, like kind of like the butterfly shape or the Baddha Konasana. Yep, and then you just slide the leg back out again. So try that again. So you bend the leg, slide foot, keep the foot on the floor, you just slide the foot up towards inner leg, and then you slide the leg back out. So really a small movement. Just try that again, same side, pulling foot in, and sliding leg back out. Okay, so try other side. So you pull the foot in towards the inner groin, knee goes off to the side like the butterfly shape, sort of like a tree pose shape. Yep, and then you slide leg back out. Try that again on this side. Sliding foot in. And back out again. Let the head let the foot and the leg be really heavy. Just sort of sliding in and out. OK, 
Okay, and then we'll just go side to side. Go slow, just like slow it down, maybe 20%. So you slide the foot in and back out. Just go in your own timing here. Go side to side. And you could observe right away, just notice the hips. Chances are you'll find some differences between left and right. I know I do. Pretty rare to be even side to side. You could even place your hands here on your hips, just like right on the front of the hips on the ASIS. And just notice. Of course, there's a little engagement in the musculature going side to side. Yeah, okay, good. And then just relaxing, releasing that. Let's go back to first side. So first side, you slide the foot up towards inner groin. From here, plant the foot to the floor. And then we'll in-swing the knee slightly, so knee drops across the body slightly as you slide the leg back out to straight. Just a little circle. Okay, so you slide the foot up towards inner groin, plant the foot, knee drops across body as you slide the leg back out. Just do that one side for now. So you just do little circles basically. Mm-hmm. So as you drop the knee across the body, that's a little internal rotation as you slide the leg all the way back out. Now aim to really sense and feel here. Don't force the movement in any way. Instead, go slow and notice the subtlety if you can. Maybe there's little movements happening inside that hip socket. Don't hold the breath. Let the breath really flow. Maybe a big breath wants to swell through. Yeah, okay, and then let's try other side. So then you pull the foot up, you plant the foot to the floor, in swing knee into internal rotation as you slide the leg back out. Try that a few times. These beginning movements are very slow, they're very subtle, quite different than our active practice, but helpful, I think, helpful to get into just the felt sense in the body. And take a few more like that. Waking up the hip joint, of course. Yeah, great. And then after that last one, slide legs all the way back out. We'll let everything go. Let's just bring arms to sides. Let's just do a little shake. Could start by moving the tailbone side to side. Move the tailbone side to side, shake hips side to side. And then just really let the legs go, let the feet go. Shaking, 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 especially just initiating the movement right from the tailbone. It's like you're wagging, wagging your tail back and forth, back and forth. Shake, 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 shake. Letting go, letting go, letting those feet go, letting legs go. Mm -hmm. Good, and then let that all settle. Stopping the shaking, pausing. Just sense and feel any little tingles after the shaking there. That was a short one. Sometimes in my practice I do super long shaking practice. It's good, 
Good to reset the system. Okay, and then sliding feet up, plant the feet to the floor. And from here, we'll just grab a hold of the sole of the right foot with the left hand. See how I've done that? You can't get a grip, then you use a strap here. Okay, so palm of the hand to the sole of the foot, bending the leg like so. You can take the other hand and just place it on the outside of the knee and we'll just rock slightly side to side. See if you can soften the inner groin on that right side, soften inner groin, soften outer hip, sliding the shin, it's kind of like an old fashioned typewriter, sliding the shin left to right a few times. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you're gently pulling the foot in towards your body. Keep the right foot flexed. You pull toes back towards shin, press out through the heel. Rocking slightly. And then from here, if you'd like, you can extend the bottom leg. So now press out through the bottom leg. Press thigh bone down towards the floor. Press out through heels, both heels. Rocking side to side. You can take different angles here to see what it's like. You can bring the heel closer to the body and then further away. Invite the breath right into the area that you're stressing. Maybe you're feeling it in the outer hip here. Good. And then from here, let's take other side. So then we'll pop over, releasing that side slide leg out for a moment. Okay, we'll start with now right leg bent, foot to the floor. Left leg comes in, and grab a hold of the sole of the foot. Okay, and we'll do a little rocking side to side. Again, you can always use a strap here if needed. This side might feel really different. We're getting to know our hips here in our practice today. Could extend bottom leg out if you'd like. Okay, we'll go slow. So rocking left to right like that old fashioned typewriter, maybe experimenting with bringing the foot higher or lower to see how that placement of the foot changes the stress in the hip joint, outer hip, and then you can kind of find your sweet spot. So you want somewhere where you're feeling sensation, but it's nothing too intense, nothing that feels like pain. Let's rock a little side to side here. Now keep both feet flexed. So pull toes back towards the shins and press out through the heels. Of course, there's some muscular engagement in the arm, pulling the foot down towards the body slightly. Mm, nice full breaths. You could imagine that you're bringing the breath into the area that you're stressing. Eventually finding a place of stillness, perhaps for a moment. Good, and then we'll release, slide legs back out, straighten both legs. Just pause, bring your arms to your sides and notice. Maybe there's a little flush into hips, hip sockets. Mm -hmm. Good, okay, and then let's bend legs and draw the knees now right up into the chest. Mm -hmm. We'll keep our arms out to our sides here, anywhere that's comfortable. Okay, so from now, for now, just draw your knees a little bit away from you. Feet stay off the floor. See how the lower back arches? And then draw the knees over towards one side and then up towards you as you round the spine. Over towards other side as the spine starts to arch. 
You draw the knees away from you, arching lower back. So little circles basically. So try that a few times. Let's go one direction, drawing those circles. So you arch the lower back as the knees draw away and then you round the lower spine as the knees draw towards you. Yep, let's try other ways. You pull knees in, go in opposite direction. Notice if you're gripping in other places in your body. Yep, good, and then after that next one we'll set the feet down slide legs back out good well done okay pausing there now for this next one you'll need your strap let's bend both legs plant the feet to the floor this time you loop the strap onto the foot extend foot up towards the sky okay so see how I've got my strap on my heel it's nice to place your hand through the loop with the palm facing down Okay, from here now you could extend the bottom leg towards the floor. So press out through both heels. Mm -hmm. Press out especially through the inner heel. And really drive that bottom leg down. Press the thigh bone down towards the floor. Good, and then we'll take the opposite hand now through the loop. Opposite palm through the loop. You could bring same side arm just out to a T beside you or maybe the cactus or goalpost arm here. From here now, bend your top leg about 30%. Soften the inner groin, soften inner groin and re-extend. Let's try that a few times. You bend the leg, mm -hmm. draw a knee down and then re-extend. Yeah, just kind of like you're moving into like a happy baby type position, if you know that one. Let's try it again. So you bend the knee and then re-extend. Good. On this next one now, as you bend the leg, take external rotation. So your toes, those toes of the upper leg are going to just turn off to the side a little bit. Keep that external rotation as you re-extend the leg. And then from here, we'll draw the leg across the body. You might not get that far, so I'd encourage you not to just collapse to the floor. Keep a real active force in the leg. So press out through the inner heel of the upper leg and encourage that external rotation. So the outer hip rolls away from the belly. And breathe here. Good, and then come back through center and let's pop over and take other side. So begin by extending both legs now, press out through both heels. Okay, so bottom leg stays active, press the thigh bone down. And press out through the inner heels of both legs. Good, and then we'll take the opposite hand through the loop. And let's just start with a few bends and straightens. So you bend the leg and then you re-extend with a little bit more action. Bending. And as you bend, just soften that inner groin, outer hip area, the hip crease. 
and then you re-extend. Go in your own pace a few times. But on this next one now, as you bend the leg, take external rotation. So you turn your toes off to the side of the mat, externally rotate the leg, and then you re-extend the leg, keeping some of that rotation. Then we'll bring the leg across the body. Mm -hmm. Chances are you're feeling this in the outer hip. Okay, so don't be in such a rush to, you know, go way into the twist. See what it's like in there. Go slow, breathing, steadying awareness right here. Really root that opposite side shoulder down. Could have the arm to a T or you could bring the arm to the goal post shape, that's fine too. Soften jaw, soften eyes. Good, and then come back through center and we'll pop the strap off. Once again, let's hug the knees into the chest and release both legs now all the way down towards the floor. Pause there. Just once again, sensing and feeling. It's helpful to interject the pause into our practice to observe the little echoes of the postures. Helps us to develop sensory awareness. It's okay, and then beautiful. Let's just roll to one side. We're gonna use our bolster for our next setup. So we'll push our way up to seated briefly. And this time here, we're gonna take our bolster and we'll place our bolster right underneath our hips. So you can come to sit up on the bolster. And then you come to lie back down on the floor. So the bolster here is right underneath the tailbone. It's not underneath the lower back so much or the lumbar. It's a little lower than that. It's just kind of sacrum is resting on the bolster. That's usually a good spot. So begin by having the legs bent. And then from here, you can experiment with extending both legs nice and long. Press out through heels. Let's keep this active today. So you press out through heels. Mm -hmm. If you'd like, you can extend your arms up overhead, bending the arms, clasping the opposite elbow this way. Okay, so here's a little back bend. Of course, we're opening the ventral plane, the front line of the body. Hip flexors get really tight with all of the sitting that we do in chairs, etc. So here now, really lengthening, of course, psoas deep stabilizer that runs from the lower back down through the low abdomen into the inner leg. So press now out through inner heels, lengthen front body. If you're feeling a little crunching in your lower back, you may need to slide upper buttock muscles down away from the lower back a little bit. Feel expansiveness of inhale. Great, and then let's bend the legs, plant the feet to the floor. For this next one here, hug knees into chest, 
This time we'll cross the shins and you grab a hold of the outer feet this way for the Sukhasana shape. Okay, so see now my hands are to the soles of the feet, my arms are on the outsides of the legs and I pull the feet just slightly up towards the head and then down towards the body. Pause there, sense and feel. It's the aim here is to come into contact with how it is now. And keep your legs active by pulling the toes back towards the shins, pressing out gently, pressing out through heels. Okay, and you can just gently use a little bit of muscular effort here to draw the feet down towards the chest. Of course, the hips are elevated. If you're not practicing inversions, you could just have the hips down on the floor and do this practice or this pose without the bolster. Three more complete breaths. Good, and then we'll switch sides here, crossing opposite shin over. And once again, you grab a hold of the soles of the feet, draw the feet up towards the head slightly and then down towards the body. Okay, so make sure that the shins are crossed, if you can, right near the center of the body. And you press out through the inner heels. Soft and slow, steady breath. About three more breaths here. slowly release, hug knees in, we'll bring feet to the floor and let's just pop the bolster out now, extend legs, one final rest pose here, you release the legs, release the arms, okay so now just really sense and feel. Good, and then let's roll over to one side so you can reach one arm up towards your head, rolling over. Use your upper hand to press your way up to seated. Okay, from here we're going to move into one supported position with the props. And let's see, I'll show and then you can use whichever props you have at home to create a similar setup. We're going to do today a restorative child's pose. 
So I'm going to use my folded blankets here as a way to support my bolsters. So I've got my folded blankets. Now these are pretty big blankets. So if you don't have big blankets like this, use some other cushions. You want quite a bit of height. I would say this is about the minimum height that we're looking for. You could even take more. You could use like a couch cushion that could work. Um, or again, whatever you have at home. So I've got my folded blankets here. And then I'm going to take one bolster this way and then two bolsters this way. Okay, so again, that's kind of like the minimum height that we're looking for. You could even just take more there. I might even just do a block like so, just to keep the height, okay? So you want to just build it up as much as possible. And then see now how I've got my legs nice and wide. My feet are together, knees apart. If this is too much for your ankles or for your knees, you can use blankets as support here. So for example, I could take a folded blanket here and I just make a little roll and then I place the roll underneath my ankles like so. Okay, that's sometimes helpful. It's also sometimes helpful to place the blanket behind the backs of the knees. And in that case, you'd fold the blanket and tuck it right up against the back of the knee. Whichever variation you find, just make sure that for this pose in particular, you're quite comfortable. So we're looking for a posture that doesn't elicit a lot of sensation. You want something that feels very easeful and relaxing. We're going to stay for quite a period of time. So five to seven minutes, we'll stay in this pose. Lots of time to really drop in and relax and rest. So a big part of this particular setup here is that we want to restore the body in the posture setup. We don't want to be experiencing very much sensation. It's much more about rest. So I've got my support here. Final step that's nice, if you have extra blankets, you could take a blanket around your body and I'll show that. I'm gonna place it around me and then it's nice to actually tuck it. So you sort of tuck it in like so as you come down. You wanna really, if you can, at least protect your lower back. You could place just a folded blanket around your lower back, for example. If you have an eye mask, it's nice to put the eye mask on as well. And then I'll ring the bell or let you know when it's time to come out. Okay, so from here, feet together and knees apart. And then I come to rest down. And depending on your setup, you may wanna place one ear to the, to the prop, or you could try and place your forehead down onto the prop that way. Some of you might find placing another little folded blanket on the bolster is helpful. You could do like this and then come down. Okay, I'll let you know when we're about halfway through and that way you can always switch sides. If one ear has been down, then you would switch and turn and go to the other side. Okay, so coming into the pose now, Wrap yourself up and we'll come to lie in our child's pose together. You can rest your hands down on the prop in front of you. It's mostly important here that you feel supported. So more props is better. Once you've arrived, really checking in and ensure that you are comfortable. So any little adjustments that you need to make, please do make those. So if you feel like your arms are still hanging a little bit, you might want to prop underneath the elbows. Make sure that your neck and your head are comfortable.
And as you settle here, really now dropping, let the weight of your body go. Let your shoulders go. Maybe softening or closing your eyes. So coming into your restorative child's pose. Of course, the Sanskrit name for this posture is balasana, pose of the child. So perhaps returning to a kind of childlike essence, a place of receptivity, of innocence, If you've wrapped yourself in a blanket, you can feel the support of that blanket, the warmth and the comfort it provides. Now really give yourself permission to let go. And we'll rest together in silence, just really invite the silence now to be a nurturing force, a supportive aid. Silence as a kind of benevolence. And please do soften eyes if you'd like, and turn now your awareness inside. If you've had your head turning in one direction, now we'll turn the head in the opposite direction.
And really aiming to let go here. And in the next few breaths, very, very slowly, you can roll the spine back up to seated. Take your time here. Now, of course, in your home practice, you could do that one a lot longer, but we will conclude. So just bringing the props out and we'll just take one moment here. Let's come down onto the floor, extend legs. Release the legs, release the arms. Okay, so now just returning to that pause that we did throughout practice. Once again, letting go, noticing any little flushes maybe into the hips, the legs, knees. And if you'd like, you can stretch and roll to one side and return to your seated position. And perhaps sitting up on a little height, resting hands down on the legs. Returning now to present moment awareness. Maybe noticing a little bit more freedom in the hips. Gently lengthen spine upwards. And let's bring the palms of the hands together and bowing slightly downwards, honoring our practice, honoring the teachings of yoga. Hmm, thank you for your practice.